We've got our DC comic solicitations for June of 2022. I just want to be honest up front. I'm not exactly excited about a lot of these comic books, but I will be as forthright and entertaining as possible as I can with these, uh, with these comic books and not get too depressed on you. Normally, I would start out with a big topic. It's going to be Dark Crisis, but it turns out that topic was too big for me to cover at the beginning of another video that's going to be pretty long anyway. So you'll be seeing that either on Tuesday or Wednesday, more likely on Wednesday. So I'm going to go by DC Comics by the numbers. They will get into the solicitations themselves. Could be a quicker video, perhaps between 20 and 25 minutes, because uh, I'm cutting out what would have been the very beginning of it. So we're going to get into DC Comics for June 2022. There will be 56 new DC Comics released, 11 of which will be number one issues for a total of 20% of all new DC Comics in June 2022, which is a little high for DC Comics, although they are trending up as of late. So I would expect this number for, to potentially even out and kind of stay in that 15 to 20 percent range for the foreseeable future if you are a dc comics completionist or you're really interested in speculator value so you want those number one issues and potential first appearances of, of comics that could be important it's going to cost you 63 dollars in total or an average of five dollars and 73 cents per issue which is significantly higher than marvel comics number one issues which are five dollars and nine cents so you are definitely paying a premium for being a dc comics fan and wanting to invest in their number one issues Although two of their number ones are $10, and that has certainly trended the number a little bit up. Now, as far as Batman, obviously, this is the majority of all DC comics being released for quite some time are Batman or Batman-related. In June of 2022, there will be 11 new comics starring Batman, whether it be Bruce Wayne, whether it be Jace Fox or, or Batman Beyond. A total of 20% of all new comics in June will star The Dark Knight himself, for a total of $54 or an average of $4.90 per comic book issue. As far as Batman-related comic books, comic books starring Batman in a team book or a Batman-related character such as Nightwing, Harley Quinn, Joker, something like that, there will be 15 new comics total related to Batman. 26% of all new comics from DC will feature Batman as part of an ensemble cast or a Batman character leading the way for a total of $64.00 or an average of $4.26 per issue. So the total number for Batman in June of 2022 are 26 new comics. 46% of all new DC comics will star the Dark Knight in a solo book as part of an ensemble or a Batman-related character. That is a lot of Batman, but we are very used to this. It's normally between 45 and 53%, so this is right in line with that. For a total of $118, if you are a Batman completionist, I am sorry, you are going to be coming out of pocket if you're a Superman fan, you are in much better times. There is no Justice League anymore, so there are very few comic books starring Superman, whether it be Clark Kent or John Kent. In fact, there are only four. For 7% of all new comics from DC in June, will star Superman one way or the other. For a total of $17 or $4.25 per issue, same thing for Wonder Woman. Four new comics, 7% of all new comics will star or feature Wonder Woman in some role. For a total of $17 or $4.25 per issue, so you are definitely being overtaxed and overburdened if you are a Batman fan, but we've known this for quite some time. I'm a Batman fan. I'm feeling the burn myself. In fact, we've actually had to cut down the amount of Batman we will even consider covering on our This Week in Batman show because it's just too much. And there's not enough quality there to warrant us going out there and reading all the dribble. So we're trying to look at the very best stuff or at least the, the titles that are the most important to feature right here on the channel. So those are DC Comics by the Numbers. As you know, this is likely to be a longer video between 20, 25, hopefully not more than that. But still, you might need a refreshment. Go grab you a Bud Light. If you're in my neck of the woods, go grab you a Sand Mig Light, perhaps a Snapple or a Lemonade. Let's sit in here, have some fun, and talk about the big releases from DC Comics in June of 2022. And remember, I'm going to have more information on Dark Crisis tomorrow or Wednesday. So if I don't cover those enough here, you're getting a whole video very soon. First up, we've got Batman 124, the very last issue from Joshua Williamson. We knew this was going to be a shorter run. Unfortunately, Jorge Molina will not be the artist. We do have Howard Porter. He's a great artist in his own right, but I thought Jorge Molina did enough great work that he probably warranted to finish this very abbreviated run with Joshua Williamson together. This will be $5. And after this, we're getting Chip Zdarsky in the aftermath of Shadow War. Batman has returned to Gotham, but what he hears word of strange developments He's forced to question, has Abyss returned? Perhaps we're getting the return of Abyss right before Joshua Williamson, the character's creator, leaves the title. Dark Crisis number one, Joshua Williamson. You were definitely going to see his name a lot here, although he has been replaced on one of the titles he was writing. 
Daniel St. Priya on art. Obviously, this is the big event. We are going to have some preludes to this. There's going to be a free comic book day and a couple of Road to Dark Crisis type prologues. Obviously, Justice League 75, where the Justice League themselves die. This is going to be the beginning of the event. Six dollars, one of seven. So that gives us an idea of how long this is going to take us. The epic event, years in the making, is finally here. Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and the rest of the Justice League are dead. The remaining heroes are left to protect the world from an onslaught of violent attacks by DC's greatest villains. Can the legacy heroes step out of the shadows of the classic heroes to form a new Justice League? Well, they're going to try, but I don't think it's going to be that successful. Obviously, I'll be reading it. This is a major event. We will review it right here on the channel. But I have low, low expectations, although... I'm a big fan of Joshua Williamson, and I'm maybe am I a bigger fan of Daniel Samprey? I haven't seen one comic issue from DC illustrated by Samprey that hasn't been phenomenal. Dark Crisis, Young Justice number one, Megan Fitzmartin, Laura Braga, four dollars. If you don't know who Megan Fitzmartin is, she's the writer that did the, the sexuality swap on Tim Drake and Batman Urban Legends. I really like Impulse, but I don't see any reason to spend money on Megan Fitzmartin. Black Adam number one from Christopher Priest and Rafa Sandoval. This is a comic book I'm absolutely looking forward to. I covered it in a whole video if you haven't checked that out. This is something that I think could be very, very good. Although I do think it's a bad idea to replace Black Adam when he has the movie coming out. But obviously, I trust Christopher Priest and Rafa Sandoval to do great work. And I imagine they have a play it going forward. Flashpoint Beyond number five, Jeff Johns, Tim Sheridan, Jeremy Adams. That name Tim Sheridan is just like, one of these things is not like the other. One of these things just doesn't belong. You know what I mean? You have two really good quality comic book writers, and then you have another writer who's never, ever written even an average comic book on his best day. What is he even doing here? Nubia, Queen of Amazons, number one, Stephanie Williams, Aletha Martinez, and Mark Morales. It's a good thing this is a four-issue miniseries because it would have been embarrassing when they had to announce the, the cancellation of the title after two issues. No one's going to read this, but Nubia may be queen. Well, why don't you just spoil the whole trial of the Amazons while you're at it? But not all Amazons call Themyscira home, which prompts the new monarch to leave Themyscira for the first time in decades to search, serve her people in a way Hippolyta never had the opportunity to. This whole stupid not all Amazons live on Themyscira add-on to the DC Comics lore, Wonder Woman lore, is just that. Really stupid. Poison Ivy number one, G. Willow Wilson, Marcio Takara, six issue miniseries. Pamela Isley has been a lot of things in her life a living god, a supervillain, an activist, a scientist, and dead. In a new body that she didn't ask for with a renewed sense of purpose, Ivy leaves Gotham and sets out to complete her greatest work a gift to the world that will heal the damage dealt to it by ending humanity. Eh, well, we've heard that story before. I don't think G. Willow Wilson is the worst writer in the history of the world, but I don't think she's all that great either. So. If you're a big Poison Ivy fan, maybe you like this. I'll probably take a skip rooney Although those are some good tatas, you know what I mean? Well done. DC Pride 2022, number one. Just like I said in my Marvel video, I don't really read anthologies as is. But if you're going to have an anthology and you put the names Devin Grayson, Stephanie Williams, and Alyssa Wong front and center on the book, that's an extra skip rooney And for $10, never. I wouldn't even read this to review it on the channel because it's not worth my time. DC Pride Tim Drake special, Megan Fitzmartin. Are they trying to make Megan Fitzmartin a thing now? She must be really cheap if they're giving her all this work. $6 for a Megan Fitzmartin comic. And most of this is just a reprint of her story from Batman Urban Legends 4 through 6 with a little bit of extra 10 like sprinkled into it. I guess there's going to be just a little bit of an extra original story at the end. The Man, they are definitely overselling this one. The breakout story from Batman Urban Legends. No, the breakout story from Batman Urban Legends is the Chip Zdarsky Red Hood story. This is the one that got some headlines and everyone rolled their eyes at. Collected in one volume for the first time, but no one asked for it. In time for Pride Month, Tim Drake searched for missing. Tim Drake searched for a missing friend kidnapped by the villains known as Chaos Monsters. Leads Tim to realize his identity as a bisexual man. Enthralling stuff. Multiversity Team Justice number one, Ivan Cohen, Danny Lore, Marco Fila. Danny Lore is, is a no bueno, no go for me. The Flash, the fastest man alive, Kenny Porter, Jason Howard. I think this has something to do with the movie. I'm not interested. Aquaman and Flash, Void Song number one. So this is the Jackson Lands and Colin Kelly book. I would read it, 
because Vasco Gorgiev is the artist and I've been supporting him since he was crowdfunding books on Kickstarter. But now that I know that it's seven dollars, probably going to take an old pass on this one. You know what I mean? I can't imagine spending seven dollars and then reading an entire Lansing Kelly book and being happy about it. You know what I mean? Earth Prime number five, The Flash, S. Carson and Emily Polizzi. Six. OK, no, six dollars. Earth Prime crossover six, Jeff Hirsch and Thomas Pound, another six dollars. Nope. DC Vampires, Killers number one, Matt Rosenberg, Mike Bowden. I've liked DC versus Vampires. I don't think Matthew Rosenberg is particularly talented. And the lack of James Tynan in the credits certainly makes this something that should throw off warding bells in your head if you like that title. I don't like DC versus Vampires enough to go out on a limb and start spending money on Matthew Rosenberg. He's got a lot to prove before he jumps back on my radar as a, as a comic writer that doesn't make me not want to buy a comic book. Milestones in history number one. So this is the Black History Month comic book celebration that is coming you know, several months later. Do you think they'll do that with DC or Marvel Pride? I doubt that they would do that to the Pride anthologies, but I guess, you know, Black History and Juneteenth are the same thing to DC Comics. I believe that's probably why they moved it into this month. I honestly don't know what Hannibal... Alexander Dumas, Prince, or any of the other people being profiled in this comic book have to do with, with slaves being emancipated you know, for the Juneteenth celebration, but apparently this is now a Juneteenth celebration. Blood Syndicate Season 2, Jeff Thorne, Criss Cross, Juan Castro. I want to read this book, but, but Jeffrey Thorne really bait and switched me hard on that Green Lantern, you know what I mean? I've heard it's not his fault, but it's kind of hard to forgive somebody when they've delivered something that you dislike so much. Duo number two from Greg Pak. Action Comics 1044. And you know what I say? I say lock it up. I think Action Comics is now the best ongoing from DC Comics. I think it's supplanted Robbins, at least in my mind. This thing has put the pedal to the metal, and it is going 100 miles an hour. And every single issue for at least the last five months has been near spectacular, if not spectacular. This story has been absolutely fantastic. Bill Kennedy Johnson, Ricardo Federici, $5 is a little bit pricey. If you want the cardstock variant, it's going to be $6. But this thing is absolutely worth it. And it's got David Lampham as the backup story. So you're not having to pay for Cena Grace or Nadia Shavis or G. Will Wilson or any of those crappy writers like this. This actually has really good writers on it. I am appalled that DC Comics are not screaming from the rooftops that they have an amazing Superman ongoing right now that everyone should be reading. If you're a Superman fan, this is the comic book for you. Superman Son of kal is garbage. Action Comics has been phenomenal, and nobody knows about it because nobody's reading it, which is just, it's a travesty. It's a shamocracy. That's what I say. Aquaman, number five, Chuck Brown and Brandon Thomas from Sammy Basri. I just can't get into the book. I, I read Aquaman the Becoming. It just wasn't very good. I had higher hopes for Brandon Thomas. Perhaps he needs a better character to write. Batgirls, number seven by Clunrad. The worst comic book writing duo in the entire industry. These two creators are the mark of death on any comic book that they write. I read the first issue. It was appalling. Robbie Rodriguez on the art. I'm glad they're not wasting Jorge Corona's immense talents on this. This comic book and series just sucks. There's nothing else to say about it. Batman Beyond Neo Year number three. Colin Kelly, Jackson Lansing, Max Dunbar. Batman Beyond The White Knight number four. Sean Murphy. Sean Gordon Murphy. Now, if Action Comics wasn't my lock of the month, this would be the other one, because this is going to be fan-fucking-tastic. I've heard a couple stories behind the scenes about what this is going to entail. You are not going to believe it. The hunt continues as Bruce Wayne searches for the most dangerous offspring in Neo-Gotham, the daughter of the Joker. Little does he know the new Batman is right behind him, waiting for just the right moment to strike and put an end to the older generation of heroes in the city. All seems to be going according to plan for Derek Powers, as his true intentions are revealed, plus... Ace the Bat Hound joins the story. Yes, we'll take Ace the Bat Hound. That makes it even better. Thank you very much, Sean Gordon Murphy. You, sir, are a gentleman and a scholar. Batman Fortress number two, Gary Witta, Derek Robertson. And I think it's just, it's a terrible timing to make your debut on Batman comics. I feel bad for Gary Witta. Obviously, he's the screenwriter for Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Even if this is good, I mean, it's, it's just an oversaturated market. At least it's only four bucks, though. Batman Killing Time number four, Tom King. This is a shorter miniseries. Normally he gets like 10 to 12 issues to tell. This is in six issues. Can he really do two game-changing character-destroying moments in a six-issue miniseries? 
He's Tom King. He can probably pull it off. But that first issue was hot fire. I was just hoping that that's the way that this continues. David Marquez's art was absolutely fantastic. And that first issue was like, you know, chef's kiss kind of stuff. Batman the Night number six, Chip Zdarsky. Carbine did something or other. Issue six of the 10-issue Maxi series. This takes on more significance now that we know that Chip is going to be the new Batman writer starting the next month after this one. I like the story, and it definitely got better in issue three and feels more impactful and important as the story is moving along. And that's important. Batman Urban Legends number 16. What are they going to charge us $8 for? There better be some good writers on this. Vita Ayala, Mark Russell, Jay Grayson, and Josh Trujillo. <laughs> Batman Catwoman number 12. Now, this is god-awful. The art by Clayman has been fantastic, but Tom, this is like as bad as Tom King gets. It's all the worst writing instincts and tropes that Tom King can put into one comic book. That is what Batman Catwoman is. It's terrible. Batman Superman World's Finest number four, Mark Wade Dan Moore. This is likely moving right to the top of your lock of the month and your best DC ongoing because that first issue was the best first issue they've released in a very long time, probably since Batman Last Night on Earth. That first issue from Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo was essentially perfect. So was Batman Superman World's Finest number one. Shockingly perfect. This thing was badass. If you didn't read it, go check it out. Like you are doing yourself a disservice. I understand most of us don't like Mark Wade, but you can't risk not reading good comics. There just aren't enough of them, especially from DC. Catwoman 44, Titty Howard, and Bengal. Dark Knights of Steel, number seven, Tom Taylor, Nathan Gooden. This thing has been perfectly okay for like a fantasy realm Justice League type of book where you have all the characters in the DC universe. I think Tom Taylor should have been more inventive and true to the genre with the language, and I think the book would be better. I think it's missing good dialogue that feels like it's from a fantasy comic. Deathstroke Eek, number 10, Ed Briss and Dexter Soy. So this is the Deathstroke Eek with no longer with Joshua Williamson. I imagine Ed Brisson is the new writer for quite some time. I like Dexter Soy. I actually like Ed Brisson quite a bit, but this, this does give me pause. Find out as Deathstroke Year One begins. I'm tired of Year One stories. I'm tired of Year Zero stories, and I'm certainly fucking tired of Year Two stories. Let's find a new gimmick and go beat that into the ground, because this thing is so fucking dead, it's not even funny. Detective Comics 1061 with legendary comic writer Mariko Tamaki and hack writer Nadia Shabas. Mariko Tamaki had a couple of strong Detective Comic issues during Fear State, but I think they were made to look stronger because James Tynan had completely checked out of that Batman series, and he was coasting to the finish line. And the Mariko Tamaki issues were better, but none of them were all, really all that good. And I think we've all seen the writer that Mariko Tamaki is in Shadows of the Bat, and it ain't good. Mariko Tamaki on Detective Comics needs to end soonest. Fables 152, Bill Willingham, Mark Buckingham. This thing is going to be great. I'm so glad that the Fables universe is back. What does upset me is that it's now issue 2 of 12. I thought it was going to be an ongoing but apparently now it's a maxi series that blows. Perhaps the Batman versus Biggie, you know, fable story wasn't the seller that they anticipated. Future State Gotham 14, Dennis Culver, Harley Quinn 16, Stephanie Phillips, Riley Rossmo. This is the worst creative team in all of comics. When I say creative team, I don't mean writing teams. The worst writing team is Clune Rat. This is the worst creative team, writer and artist together. I can't imagine anything worse than Stephanie Phillips and Riley Rossmo. It is absolutely terrible. I am Batman, number 10, John Ridley, Christian Doucet. If you want to, if you need to read a John Ridley comic book, go to Marvel and read his Black Panther because it's actually good. This is not. Justice League versus Legion of Superheroes, number four. Brian Michael Bennis, Scott Godlewski. This thing has been a train wreck, and I hope this is the last thing Brian Michael Bennis ever writes at DC Comics. Monkey Prince, number five, Gene Yang and Bernard Chang. It looks like it's no longer starring Batman and Robin, so that's probably a better thing. Naomi season two. I forgot about this one, but it's only got two issues left. Hopefully this will be the last thing that Brian Michael Bendis writes as well is just, although Naomi is probably the high point of his entire time at DC comics, Nightwing 93, Tom Taylor, Bruno Redondo battle for Bloodhaven's heart after uncovering that blockbuster isn't who he says he is. In fact, he's much worse. Nightwing Babs and Bloodhaven mayor Melinda Zuko also known as Nightwing's sister battle to expose blockbusters malpractices. Robin number 15, Josh Williamson is sticking on this one. Roger Cruz, Norm Rapund. Damien is back from the Shadow War and licking his wounds the best way a way knows how. Brooding, but in light of the shocking death in the Al Ghul family. Man, they're going to kill Talia, huh? 
Robin resolves to dig deeper into the world of the demon and return to Lazarus Island. With Flatline at his eye, never, never talk about it. Maybe this thing will be picking up. That sounds absolutely fantastic. They should just have a Robin and Flatline comic. You know what I mean? Rogues number four, Josh Williamson, Leo Max. This is the fourth and final issue of the miniseries, $7. Definitely going to be checking out. It's one of the one of the comics I'm looking forward to. Scooby-Doo, where are you? Number 116. Normally, I would skip this, but in the case of DC Comics, this might be the best comic book they release. Suicide Squad, Blaze number three, Cy Spurrier, Eric Cable. There's a lot of Suicide Squad being produced by DC right now. Superman, Son of Kal-El number 12, Tom Taylor, and the newest DC exclusive artist, C and Dorme. Task Force Z number nine, Matt Rosenberg, Eddie Barrows, and Eber Freya. The first issue, second issue, they weren't too bad, but I really like the art. I, I like Eddie Barrows a lot, but they just wasn't good enough for me to stick around. The Flash, 783, Jeremy Adams and an artist. I'm not even going to try and say that guy's name. It sucks that Fernando Passerin's not on this one, but you should be reading this. If you like DC Comics, if you like Wally West, this is the comic book for you, although I guess it is a Dark Crisis tie-in. The search for Barry Allen with the Justice League God. Wally gathers the entire Flash family in a desperate attempt to search for the Speed Force and finally locate the missing Barry Allen. This three-issue story ties directly into the summer's event, Dark Crisis. The Joker 15, originally this was solicited as an ongoing, obviously it is now a maxi series because this is issue 15 of 15. I imagine this will be the last work of James Tynan on any Batman stuff for the foreseeable future. Obviously he's still got nice house on the lake and he's also doing some Sandman universe work as well. Six dollars, I'm glad this is over. It had so much problems to begin with, but this thing just died a while ago. Jurassic League 2, James Tynan, Alvaro, Martinez Bueno. Issue 9 of 12. This must be like, this must be, um, this must be Nice House on the Lake. Because that's the artist from that book. But it's solicited with the title and like the information is for Jurassic League. But he's not writing Jurassic League. Daniel Warren Johnson is with uh, Juan Gideon as the artist and co-writer. So this is really strange. It's probably an amalgamation of, of two different solicitations. And it says it's 17 plus. There's no way the Jurassic League is an adult book. Sandman Universe, Nightmare Country 3, James Tynan. Swamp Thing 14, Ram V, Mike Perkins. I guess this is a 16-issue maxi now. I really love the Future State stuff. This this series just never got me. Wonder Woman 788, Clunrad. No thanks. Wonder Woman Evolution, Stephanie Phillips, Mike Hawthorne. Man, this dude's Wonder Woman is the ugliest Wonder Woman in the history of the world. I would never, ever pay for another issue of this. This was awful. That does it for your DC Comics solicitations for June of 2022. Not a whole lot there, but there are some intriguing comic books. I wish they had those alternatives that Marvel were putting out where you have those 90s throwbacks where you can just jump out of continuity and just read something that's fun. DC Comics continuity is a complete mess. I'll get into that tomorrow or Wednesday when I talk about Dark Crisis. It's going to be an interesting video. Got a lot of things to say about that one, but... DC is just, it's in a bad place right now. We're on a very, hopefully we're at the bottom of a down cycle and we start coming up pretty soon. I don't know that that's going to happen, but that's my hope. Definitely go out there and read Action Comics, Beyond the White Knight, Robin, The Flash. There's a couple other good comic books out there, but for the most part, beware because DC really sucks right now. I talked a lot more in depth about that Christopher Priest Black Adam book that's coming out kind of in conjunction with that movie with The Rock. If you haven't seen that, you want to get excited, definitely check this video out and get all the details of the upcoming Christopher Priest, Rafa Sandoval, Black Adam book, which I think will be phenomenal.